Well, good morning, everyone. We have uh, here Uncle Polly. Uh, good, good morning, Uncle Polly. How are you today? I'm always good, my friend. Nice to be with you guys and you folks. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Okay, wonderful. So we have Uncle Polly, who is a serial entrepreneur, uh, uh, international speaker, real estate investor, and real estate coach. So yes. Today, um, I have the fortune to have you on. Thank you very much for coming. And I wanted to touch a couple of points that you've been um, discussing lately and in, in real estate. And one of them is um, a lot of people have fear in, in getting involved into real estate. And you mentioned uh, stats, 78% of the people lose the money when they go into real estate. So I wanted to have your thoughts. Why is that people are um, scared of losing the money? Well, in, in, in your experience. Uh, I, I just think a lot of people in general are scared. A lot of people are not entrepreneurs. They don't have the knowledge. You know, I mean, think about it in, in life, anything, even when we were kids. Whatever we did, it, it, we were scared. Like even the first time you played soccer, let's say, football, right? And you went out, you've never played football, you have no skills, and you're afraid, you're apprehensive. It's the same way with business, same way with real estate. If you don't know how to buy, how to evaluate, how to raise money, how to locate, how to talk, how to position yourself as the preeminent in your area, you're going to feel that same apprehension and that anxiety. Once you learn the steps the right way, you go from the 78% of people who don't have the coaching and, and the knowledge and the will to do it to the 22% that did something about it and took the risk. So in life, I, I think fear is one of the biggest things that gets in every entrepreneur's way. And I think it's simple to correct that feeling is by getting somebody, a mentor or a coach or somebody who's been there and done that. And I think a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. They're afraid to learn. And they sometimes will go into something without knowing. And that's how you get hurt. And the only way to get out of the fear is to get the knowledge because knowledge is going to give you the power to be able to take those the right risk. I don't care what business it is. There's always risk in it. But the more you know, and the more you alleviate that fear, the better you are in that business. And the more you do, you get better and better too. So that's, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned something very interesting. And, and that's uh, the right people around you. Uh, we can see it lately that there is a lot of people, uh, especially in social media, saying real estate is easy, uh, you're going to make money very fast. And, and I think from an ethical perspective, it, it's sending the wrong message. So yeah. uh, one of the things that, uh, that I've had you doing is saying is that uh, you, trans you made your first million dollars selling speakers. Yes. And then transition to real estate. And for a lot of people that are very wealthy or, or build wealth, real estate is always in the in the in the in the in the wheelhouse, correct? Yes. And yeah, 90% of people that are millionaires in that top one percent range of seven figure people and then more from there, eight, nine, even a uh, ten figure uh, does come from real estate, 90%. But what people don't ever tell you is the 78% that loses. It's like what I always say, when people go to gamble and they go to a casino or something, right? They go to the casino, they lose money. They don't come back and tell all their friends how they lost money. So a lot of times people don't hear about the 78% who don't make money in real estate. They only hear about the 22 that make it because, because that 90% is a big, is a big number of why, uh, the success comes from real estate, you know, and it's about really it's about having the right people around you, knowing the knowledge, like I said earlier. But a lot of people are fake on Instagram. They'll take pictures in front of cars and houses and they haven't even done a deal. They're selling coaching or they're selling their program because they learned it from a guy like like me who's actually done it. 
And, you know, I didn't even want to be a coach. I never wanted to be a speaker and a coach. I just wanted to do real estate. So I learned from mentors and coaches and then from experience and knowledge. And I went down and basically dirty and, and, and figured it out. And through all the years of the trials and tribulations, and let me tell you something and anybody listening, I bled to get to where I was, to where mm-hmm. I got to. Like you said, you mentioned I, I made my first million in, in uh, the audio business. I wasn't even in the real estate business, um, but I didn't know. I stumbled into that, that audio business and then I didn't know what to do with the money. So that's how I ended up getting into the real estate business. And a lot of people have other businesses, but where the, the safety is, is usually if you know what you're doing, the safety is in real estate, if you understand what you're doing. And that's really what this is about. What I'm trying to, to convey here in my words is, you know, there's a lot of fakes out there. So you got to know like who's, who's real, who's not. Um, and I know right away when I talk to somebody, if they've done the deals they said they did, or if they're just a uh, complete fake, and um, trust me, there's a lot of things. And when you've done what you've, what I say I done, and I know I done, and I talk to somebody who says they did it, and then I ask them some questions, I know right away if they're faking or not. And it doesn't necessarily mean they don't know the terminology, because a lot of people go to these, they go to these uh, seminars. And they read these books and they hang out with people, but it doesn't necessarily mean they did a deal. They know how to act or, or say they did a deal or they know the terminology and, and, and the verbiage, but it doesn't mean they did a deal. And I know right away, an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. You could drop a guy like me in any country and I'll make money. You take away everything and I'll make the, I'll, I'll come back. I'll make money. And that's why I made my first million in the audio business by accident is because I knew how to sell and I took a small little business and I knew how to grow it. Now I didn't know words. I'm not the most elegant speaker. I didn't go to college. Uh, I came from a poor background, you know, single mom, you know, my mom grew up in communism. So, you know, we were very poor and whatnot, but I didn't know how to, to, to look the part, but I knew how to do the part. I knew that every day, get up, grind, you know, put in the offers, you know, build the relationships, raise the money, talk to the contractors, learn as I went and got better and better paid for coaching. And a lot of people are not willing to invest in themselves. Uh, I was willing to invest in myself to become better and better every year. And I'm not nowhere near where I want to be. And I think I'm, I'm what they call a paranoid optimist. I'm happy and I enjoy my life, but I'm never all the way happy. I'm always paranoid. Am I ever going to go back to being poor again? And I think that's what drives a lot of entrepreneurs, especially myself, you know? So that's kind of how I got to where I am. Uh, it's, it's very interesting you mentioned that. And... Um... I wanted to ask you, there must be a, a, a moment in your life that, um, that make you think, I can't do this alone. I need coaching. And yes. I wanted to ask you, because the poly from 10 years ago and the poly from now, they're completely different. And the mindset yes. is completely different. And the people that you surround yourself, they're different levels of the game. And, 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 I, and I've been following you and now you, you're not only doing just the single deals, but you're doing big, big, massive deals. And you know that there is a lot of different personalities through that process. But now that you've been able to, to not only learn from the people who are the best in what they do, right? And, and the people who are continuous to do the thing, because one of the things that you continue to say is that you need to know your numbers. You need to know yes. your numbers. You need to know your numbers. And I've seen you, you know, breaking everything down to details. So I wanted to know how has been your progress through the through through the last 10 years with the coaching, with the people that you're surrounded yourself with, and how has that elevated you? 
to where you are oh, right now. It changed my life. I mean, look, I was always successful, quote unquote, what most people think is success. I was always fairly successful. Uh, at, obviously, growing up poor, I, I moved illegally to, to California. I started that little audio business by accident. And, you know, and I grew it. But in the real estate business, when I got into real estate full time, I did very well. But I noticed one thing 10 years ago. I was doing the same thing over and over thinking I was going to get different results. And I realized fast that I did have mentors. I read a lot of books. I, I, you know, I hung out with people in real estate, but that's not the same as when you pay for a coach, when you pay for a coach. And, and, you know, I ended up meeting JT Fox at a seminar. He was one of the speakers and I knew he was different than the other people. And so I hired him as a coach. And here's the thing. I'm not going to lie to anybody. I was afraid when I hired him because it wasn't cheap. And I think we all get this when we, when we want to get a coach or, or, or meet someone who knows more than us in our industry that we want to be better in, right? And I think a lot of people are afraid to put out the money to invest in themselves. I was no different. I was afraid, but... The, thank God I'm a type of guy that sometimes just does. I just say yes, right? And then I'm thinking, did I do the right thing? But at least I'm willing to take the risk. And I think that's what actually changed my life because I was already successful in real estate, what success is in most people's eyes. But I wasn't successful where I wanted to be. And when I met my coach, JT, I knew he could help me get to that level. And so I was willing to pay for that type of coaching. And here we are, fast forward 10 years later, I actually do business with the same guy that actually helped me get to the next level. Now, to get to eight figures in your life, you go from everybody's first threshold is let's make a hundred grand. And then from a hundred grand, let's make 500 grand and let's make a million. And then you get to a million, you want to be multi-million and then eight figures. And for some people, nine, and even some people from there, 10, what separates those people is they know how to delegate. They know how to pivot and they know how to double down because I grew up and this is how I feel because I grew up with someone like my mom who set so many filters in my head because she grew up in communism and they were very repressed people, right? So she would always say, you know, that's for the rich people. Don't talk like that. She would try to tell me, you're not going to be rich. Because I used to say it when I was young. I'm like, mom, I'm different than everybody. I don't want to go to school. And a lot of Europeans, they think school is everything, right? And I'm not knocking school because I don't want to be one of those guys. But what I'm saying is, for me, I learn differently, you know, than other people. And so when I got going back to the coaching, when I got the coaching, I, I was on a fast track. And I realized, like, if I had somebody that was there before me, even if he wasn't pouring every ounce of what he knew into me, as long as he gave me the vision and what to do and how to delegate and how to become a business within the real estate business, how to run my company like a business, that's when I went from being, uh, you know, making you know, two, 300,000 a year to making seven figures and then building a wealth machine to be able to, to maybe one day potentially become a nine figure guy. Now I'm not saying I, I will, I don't know, but I'm on my track to do that because of the way I think now. And I think a lot of people are held back by the filters that they grow up with. And that's why I touched upon that with my mom, because my mom always told me, that there's two classes in the world. There's poor and rich. And she said, just, just adapt that we're going to be poor. And I refused to listen to her. But at the end of the day, there's still filters that we all keep. So for me, 
it was tough for me to pay for coaching and to, to think differently because most people in business think that they could do everything better than people around them. That's why they stay so small. And I had to learn these, these, I had to unlearn the filters that were in my head. And sometimes that takes years, takes great coaching. It takes mentorship. It takes uh, the knowledge that we talked about earlier. And once you learn all of this and you put it all into one, one tight, neat bundle, then you'll see your growth happen. But if you ask most people, I want you to pay 50,000 for coaching. Most people will ask, well, it's not like they don't ask the right questions. I, I started asking, what is this going to make me instead of what it's going to cost me? Most people worry about what it's going to cost them. And I did too, because of those filters. And I just chose to break those filters that I was raised up with. And I think that's what started, uh, you know, my journey to be become, you know, more and more successful. Now, I never feel like I'm successful, to be honest with you. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way, because no matter where I get, like, okay, I went from making hundreds of thousands to millions, then millions, and then getting to eight figures, the DECA. And now, like I'm like okay it's it's not enough not because I'm some greedy guy that needs more money I don't really spend a lot of money I don't do it just for the money but it's the thrill it's that paranoid optimist that always wants to be better and I think that's where uh entrepreneurs really live and some make it and some don't and I think those things that I just mentioned are the reason why some don't you mentioned something very interesting, and one of them is that uh, you you are at this point of your life in a position where you're eight figure, uh, but you don't slow down. Right? Never. You don't. I work hard. Down. You exactly, and and, and and I'm not young anymore either. I'm not in my twenties, thirties, or forties. I'm in my fifties, and so you know you you a tendency to slow down, but you know I think for me. You know, I'm, I'm never like you have to adapt that I'm never satisfied when that ends is probably when I retire. And who knows if I will retire? I don't know. I keep <laughs> drinking my juices. I'm, I, I might live forever. That's good. That's good. And and this is something that interests me because a lot of people say, well, you seven figures, you six, you seven, you eight figures, you point nine figures. And, and the problems that you, you deal are easy now. But now we, we know that the pandemic, the pandemic hit, people who used to who, try to say, oh, I'm still very successful. It's very different nowadays because now we're in a, in a very fast paced world. Uh, the things that used to work a year and a half ago don't work anymore. You've seen the market changing. And, 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 and for that uh, purpose, I wanted to ask you, um, is it, is it, important to be relevant be constantly doing what you say you're doing or listen to those people who said hey five years ago i did this and it still works because we're getting a lot of those things online on social media on 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 all these different uh uh events that that, that people go to i recently went to an event and they said make it money and real estate is easy which we know it's not easy and, no. and and you just feel the, 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 the room and everyone's like, oh, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. But the truth is different. Well, that's what they're selling. See, that's what these guys are selling. They're selling. It's easy. It's a, you, you make three phone calls. You make three phone calls and, and uh, you know, you make money all of a sudden or whatever. Right. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's not easy. And like you said, in the pandemic, we had to pivot. You know, there's less and less inventory. So how do you get this, these off market deals and what there's so many different things, so many different, like right now, because the market is so tight, it's harder to get deals. And, and how do you navigate around there? People, a lot of these, these boot camps and stuff, they're teaching stuff from, from the nineties, what they were doing in the eighties, nineties, the early two thousands, 2008, when the market crashed. 
you you're you're always pivoting you're always changing and if you're not growing really you're going backwards you're decaying you know so uh, i'm constantly learning constantly getting coaching you know and now i get to learn from my coaches coaches that are even more successful than him and i think that's what people forget in their life is because you get to certain like if your goal was to become a millionaire and you get there and you don't have a, a, a re re goal oriented uh, way about you to readjust, you might just stay at seven figures your whole life. And I think a lot of people typically um, get stuck in that, that comfortability. And for me, I try to get out of that comfortability because it's easy to get comfortable when you're making a hundred thousand dollars a month uh, passively, and you're you're also doing earned income, flipping apartment buildings, retail shopping, or even single families, and you're making three four hundred thousand a month. Now mm -hmm. it's easy to get lazy, right? Because like. I don't really even spend that much money, but it's, you have to separate the money from the will to be better. And if you could do that, you will keep growing because at the end of the day, I don't need a bigger house. I don't need more cars. I don't need second, all the second home. I have all that. And I've worked my way through that. And it was a long journey. Mm -hmm. And it's because I don't drink, smoke, do drugs, uh, gamble and all that. I was very intelligent with my money. And some people make a lot of money, but they're broke. And mm -hmm. they're broke because they don't know what to do with the money. They don't have the proper blueprint to, to, to navigate their life. So that maybe one day if you do lose that, that vigor to do business, you could retire. And you could retire in a very good way. I think most real entrepreneurs never really retire 100%, but they might slow down a little bit. They might play golf once a week. Me, I don't play golf. I play hockey. <laughs> Good. Uh, fantastic. Look, um, Uncle Paul, I wanted to ask you, you're very big on loyalty. You're very that's big, number one. You're very big on loyalty, and that's probably one of the things that um, I gravitate towards JT and, and the, yeah. the whole family family first and and one of the things that i've been able and been fortunate to see is that this group of people individuals everyone has so many different skills that everyone's in different levels but loyalty is number one and oh. now we see that a lot of people get um they get married to the to the opportunity and we've seen this over and over and over again but In order to truly build wealth, you guys do something which is sharing, you know, build people uh, and, and focus on relationship. How important is that? And why is that so important in, 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 in this world that we live right now? Yeah, loyalty is number one for many reasons. Number one is when it comes to business, there's so many rats out in business. So when you find the loyal people that you could you could grow with and do business with, To me, that's the number one. And for me, I'm not loyal to the opportunity. I'm loyal because I'm loyal. And I don't just talk about loyalty because a lot of people are good at talking. I, I act it every day, you know, and, and, and I do it by doing the actions. It's just like a lot of people are easy to talk. But uh, when, when like people talk about principles until you have to use them, then we see if they're really principle driven. And so to me, that's important. And I watch what people do, not what people say. And I think that's what you've seen with, you know, a lot of the people I do business with is I have my circle very small and they're handpicked, just like the people that work in my organization, they're handpicked. And I've had a lot of people that, we bring into the organization and I see very quickly, they don't m mesh with our culture. They don't have the loyalty, their loyalty to opportunity, kind of like what you said. So, you know, you, 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 ha you must watch what people do because, you know, people talk about loyalty all, but and they, if they're willing to cheat on their wife, then I already know they're going to cheat on me. Exactly. No, wonderful. Look and, and well, that has nothing to do with business. It has everything to do with business. 
Absolutely. Because because it's easy to talk, but I want to see you do. So loyalty is number one in business. Because well, man, there's you're talking millions and millions of dollars going back and forth. You have to be able to trust the people that you do business with. And unfortunately, you hear stories all the time. Uh, my CEO screwed me. My my partner screwed me. Uh, you know, my my bookkeeper took money, embezzled money. It's very difficult very difficult to find this attribute in people because money is a very funny thing. You start learning a lot about people once there's money involved. You remember when you were kids, you could be friends with your buddies. Everybody was equal, right? Everybody was equal. Start putting some money on the table. We'll start seeing who's real and who's not. Unfortunately. But that's the that's the world that we live in, and it's important for us to understand that that happens, because we yeah. don't want to we don't want to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Uncle Polly, thank you very much for your time. I know that you're very busy, and you took time of your day to talk to me today. Um, no. Nope. Uh, just, just to finish, where can people uh, learn more about you, what you do, and more importantly? Um, how they can get in contact with you? Uh, well, uh, on Instagram or Facebook, uh, Polly Kazanowski, and you'll put it up there, I'm sure. And, you know, just DM me or private message me if you want coaching. Uh, I'm always available to coach people to get them to the next level. And I don't just coach people in life, in, uh, in real estate, obviously, that's always the basis, but I help them navigate on how to grow and run it like a business, number one. And number two, more importantly, um, is, you know, about your life and how you conduct yourself as a human being, as a man or a, a woman, how you conduct yourself. So it's, it's not just coaching real estate, it's coaching everything. Last question before I finish this. Um, do you just coach people from the United States or do you do deals anywhere in the world? I, I do deals all over the world. I, I have students in Australia and the Gold Coast. I have, I have students in UK. Uh, I have students in Canada. Obviously, most of the students are here in America. And I end up partnering up with students. Me and JT partner up. We're always looking for deals. We're looking for the next us. We're looking for people like us, the next Polly, the next JT, the next, you know, high level people that want to partner up. And if the deal is good, a lot of times we'll lend them the money and we'll do the deal and we'll walk them through. And, you know, we do a partnership, a joint venture, and that helps them grow a lot quicker. Remember, you go, you go a lot faster to the stratosphere together, not alone. If you try to do things alone, you'll get to a certain point, but then there'll be a ceiling like I got to 10 years ago. There was a ceiling. Once I opened up that ceiling, I was able to really grow. And that's what we help people do. Thank you very much, Polly. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you on and I hope we can have you again. I believe we will have you again. And I'm no problem to learn from you. <laughs> Thank you so Always. much. Good to see you. Bye, everyone. See you soon. One.